That's a great question, and I think it's one that is answered by what's called the doctrine of the wider hope. Here's the logic, as I understand it, and if you find me illogical, let us know. First Timothy 2.4 states that God desires everybody to be saved, and he then describes what that means, to come to the knowledge of the truth. That is being saved, to come to the knowledge of the truth and living it out. That said, it follows logically that trillions of human beings have never heard of Jesus. That seems to me a very simple point. God wants everybody to be saved. Salvation is only through Messiah Jesus, as I understand it, his death and resurrection, and above all, his gospel of the kingdom. This requires then that those who've never heard of him, and lived and died without ever being exposed to his existing, must have a probation in the future. I'll let that happen in the second resurrection. This follows logically, because they cannot be raised from the dead in the future and told, well, you believed in this or that Jesus, you got that wrong, you didn't understand the death of Jesus. They'd never heard of Jesus. All right, then Romans 2 plays into this. Paul in Romans 2 says, when those who never had the Torah, they weren't exposed to the Torah, which is only possible by being in proximity to Israel that had the Torah in some way. Many people lived and died without a hearing of Moses, without having the Torah in any way. What about them? Well, Paul says they've got something going on the right side of the ledger, the correct side of the ledger. Those who do by instinct, by conscience, instinct, not because they learned it from Moses, but they're doing some of the things of the law. Not Sabbath keeping, I don't think. But there are trillions of human beings who've lived good lives in some sense. So. Just listening to the law will not make you right in God's sight. This is another portion of Romans there, which translation, oh, we're in 2.12. Those who sin in the absence of the written Torah, that's it, yes, without that law, while those who sin who have written the law are condemned by that law, that's clear. But the, the point is there in Romans too, that they must be judged, can only be judged by what they could reasonably know. And it's what they did by conscience by instinct, if you like, with the right and wrong sense that every human being has, but not by the standard of Jesus. So this point is made brilliantly by Jesus, our rabbi, and that's in John chapter 15, I think, 22 and 24, isn't it? John 15, 22 and 24 says the following thing. Brilliant insight by Jesus. Speaking to the Pharisees, he said, in John 15, 22 and 24. If I had not come and told you these things, you wouldn't be guilty. He says it twice. But now that I've told you, you're guilty. That makes perfect sense. We are expected to know the speed limit. If I'm exceeding the speed limit on the road and I say, well, officer, I didn't understand that that uh, sign saying 70 on the road I thought that that was the speed limit. No, no, that was the number of the road, in fact. That's an inexcusable ignorance. However, Jesus himself admitted that some things the Pharisees couldn't have known until Jesus told them. They're not guilty until they reject the truth that they've been given. So here comes into play the famous statement of Jesus, to whom much is given, much is expected. So be careful, all of us, then. As we're exposed to new truth, or to the truth at all. We are then responsible for getting that right. We may have to make some radical changes. I've challenged some of our friends recently by saying that the Great Tribulation has not been going on for 2,000 years. Oh, they said, that can't be right, because we know that Jesus comes back after the Great Tribulation. Well, wait a minute. You can only have one Great Tribulation, and it's close to the resurrection in the future. This was a shock for some, but many of them rethought their position. So I think this is a very interesting principle. By conscience, people can do all sorts of things, good things. There are a lot of quote, good people. There are good atheists, in some sense good. But they become responsible for truth when it's put to them, and they should be searching for it too. There's no excuse for being an atheist. That shouldn't remain. But the conscience is the, is the guide in Romans 2 there, and also then the fundamental key, 1 Timothy 2.4, God wants everybody to be saved. In that second resurrection, let God deal with them according to what they reasonably could be held responsible for. 
That's the doctrine of the wider hope, not universalism. This doesn't mean that everybody gets saved. There are some incorrigibly wicked who, having known the truth in Hebrews chapter 6, Hebrews chapter 10, and then the text in, in Paul where he says, if you remain, you Christians remain within the truth, you're doing well. However, if you don't remain in the truth that you've got, you'll be cut off. That is not the doctrine of once saved or always saved. That's wrong. We are responsible for more truth because we know more truth, have learned more truth. And so it's all a question of what we understand and how we work with what we responsibly can and ought to know. They can't be right. judged by what they couldn't have known. Now, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob were Christians before Christ. We know that. They will be in the kingdom. When you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom and all the prophets, they understood fully the Messiah, the one God, the kingdom of God gospel, living in advance of the coming of Messiah first time. That's true. But they are absolutely home and dry. They're in the first resurrection, of course. The single uh, first resurrection, which will occur at the single appearance of Jesus in the future. That's quite clear. But the rest of them who lived and died without even being exposed to Moses or the plan of God in any way have to be judged on a different basis. That's the wider hope. I have no idea. Mm. what the status of X or Y or Z, because I cannot judge the degree of responsibility. I would say that leaders are more responsible. If you're a teacher of the Bible, you are more responsible than if you're not. So be careful how many of you become teachers. We want you to be teachers. Paul also said that, or in Hebrews it says that. However, be careful, because then you're really on the line. You've got to get it right. If you're leading others into truth or error, this becomes a very critical issue. Yes, Adam was the one who originally sinned, that's true. But th this is transmitted by the human genes and so on. It gets in, into very great chaos, I think. And so some Catholics have been known to be baptizing babies in utero to save them from eternal hellfire. All of that, I think, is quite unnecessary. Paul simply says, Adam sinned, therefore everybody sinned. We've all been born into this world where sin is the order of the day. We recover from that in Christ only by obeying Christ. So Hebrews 5, 9 needs to be used, as I said to the students humorously, you need to preach this at least 10 times every Sunday. Salvation is given to those who obey Jesus. Period. That's easy. Now, it's obedience in faith. It's the obedience of faith, framing the book of Romans, chapter 1, chapter 16. The obedience of faith, of course. But it's not disobedience. So people ask questions, well, should I be baptized? Does it matter if I'm baptized in water? Of course it does. It's a critical issue of obedience. Salvation, I repeat, is given to those who obey Jesus. Not perfectly. Nobody's sinless. But we better not be disobeying Jesus, as some denominations have been taught. They've been taught that the teachings of Jesus are for Jews and not for you. That is a disastrous systematic error. Jesus said, if you love me, you're going to be keeping my commandments. Or if you like the command form. Keep my commandments. If you say you love me, why are you calling me Lord, Lord? Jesus said in great frustration. And you will not do what I say. Well, one of the things he said was to get baptized in water. They all did it. Acts 8, 12, it couldn't be easier. When they believed Philip, preaching the gospel about the kingdom, please note, not just the gospel vaguely, the gospel about the kingdom and the things concerning Jesus, everything he stands for, everything he is, what he taught, then they were ready to be baptized in water men and women. That is a formula which should be used in every denomination all the time, but these easy verses, these summary verses are not frequently heard. That is alarming for me.